Stay over in the right section so the other group can come in the middle. Yeah. Hi, Sally. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. It's Body Armor Destruction Day. Hopefully, this red shirt doesn't blow your eyes out when you're watching it on the other end. But I've got a manufacturer that this is the first time that I've tested their armor in full transparency. I myself purchased this armor from them at a discount so that I could get a couple plates for testing. This is from Defender Armor. This is their level 3X plate, supposed to stop some M855A1, which has got my ears perked interest-wise. This is 23.7 millimeters thick, or for us in Freedom Units, 922 thousandths. It weighs 5.35 pounds. It is multi-curve. You can see those curves there. I do believe this is a nine and a half by 12 and a half plate. So I think that is a sappy medium. Now over here on my channel, we do things a little differently than a lot of the other armor demos that you see online. I try to give you guys as much information as possible. So I stick to as many constants that I can out here. So we shoot at 45 feet. That is the official NIJ testing distance for rifle armor. We shoot at zero degrees because that is worst case scenario. We have a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX. We got to cap capture the velocity of those rounds because there's a lot of ammunition that is claimed to be M193 or 55 grain full metal jacket and it's not producing the velocity that is actually needed to meet specifications. We put a giant spreadsheet here at the beginning and the end that we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at it. And then at the end, we confirm all those with a teardown. We use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina, number one clay donated by Chavant. This provides us with a compressible media for the armor to lay up against. Now I can't keep the temperature out here, so it just is gonna act as a representation. This plate employs a ceramic strike base. So again, per the NIJ, I have a drop test rig where we do a preconditioning test where we drop the plate on its face two times per that standard. And I actually will mark them with a drop test check mark. And then now I actually do a torque test to check for cracks. And I have a C mark down here, so somewhere in this plate, it's gonna be hard to hear. I'll have to shut up. You can hear cracks in that plate. Now, as long as the ceramic and polyethylene are properly bonded together, those cracks do not degrade or should not degrade the performance aspect of this plate. I can't remember when I actually recorded the introduction to this video. I tend to do that when I have time, but it's about 65 to 70 degrees outside today. We recorded this on the same day that we did the 1092 G2 plate. And I kind of like the threat profile that I came up with because I only have one plate of this. So we're going to start off with M80 ball as our baseline. It's 145, 150 grain full metal jacket. The spec calls for 2750 feet per second, I think plus or minus 30. We might not see that out of our 22 inch TC compass that we have here, but then we're going to take two more shots from the 24 inch, which would give us an over spec. And we're going to kind of put these in the upper extremities and lower extremities and then save the middle of the plate for the 5.56. So this one, nice. Where it says armor. And now we brought out Armor Killer Senior. This is our 24 inch Savage Axis 110 tactical left hand eject. Yiggy Hill Phantom M2 on here, maximum velocity. Got a Crimson Trace Hardline Pro optic up top. Pretty nice little optic. I think the only complaint is the reticle with the illumination off isn't as dark as what I'm used to with some of my primary arm scopes. So this shot will be on the right side. Way over spec, 3050. And then this shot will be in the lower left-hand corner. Nice. Time to get out our 5.56 threats. We've got our TC Compass, 22 inch barrel with a turbo 5.56 in here. So we're gonna see maximum velocity. We've got 
three rounds to go from. We've got our M193 55 grain full metal jacket round going pretty darn fast. It's independence. It is lead core. We've got M855 62 grain lead core conical steel penetrating tip. Then M855A1, which is what this plate is rated for, replaced M855, larger, harder arrowhead steel tip, copper core. The entire core on M855 and M855A1 are not steel. Like I said, the A1 is copper, the 855 is lead. I always put a picture in picture if I have one, so you guys can see what they look like. So this shot, I'm gonna place in a compromised area. So this is gonna be kinda of in between the two shots at the top of the plate. Shot a little high on that one. We get velocity off that, I can't tell. Then this will be on the D of Defender. Load the last two rounds of M193. This will be to the right of that last shot. Can't tell if I'm getting velocities or not. The sun may be playing tricks on the chronograph. This will be on the furthest right. Now the M855. This plate should not have an issue stopping this. Now the A1, spicy boys. Should be on the tip of the N. It should be above the D. And then he's gonna be in the third row. Looks like we're getting velocity off these, hopefully. And then, um, the sun's playing tricks on me, folks. These are gonna be on to the right of the M80 ball shot. All right, let's go see what we did. We got a lot of carnage on this plate. Looks like we're revealing some of the material makeup. I think we pretty much used it up. All right, M80 ball spec, shots number one and two. Then our plus P shots number one and two. This is a little close to the edge. Not sure if I'd consider that fair hit. M193, shots number one, two, three, and four. Then M855, shots number one and two. Don't mind the labels, I'm getting tired. Then A1, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like we're using silicon carbide or boron. It's hard to tell. Normally, if it wipes off the table, it's boron. Whoa. Sorry about that. And uh oh, raggy. We got some carnage going on here. It looks like. We're gonna have to tear this backer off here. But it looks like we've, the plus P up here, it looks like it definitely penetrated. We're using Aramid in our backer. We'll peel this off here in a minute and confirm any penetrations. The downside of the one plate and sometimes rushing this is, you know, it's hard to tell. And that's why we do a tear down. 
but it looks like it stopped all of our rounds of M855A1. Interesting. Now our back face, suffering a little bit, I think. I mean, not too terribly. With Aramid, we usually see less back face. The clay's cold, so we're not gonna see a true representation. I would say this hit down here is a good representation of what back face for 308. 26 millimeters, that's not too bad. I think at this point with only one plate, let's tear her down. Now for a lot of fan favorites, our tear down. We wanna see what the guts of our plate looks like. Here's our backer. This is foam, decently high density, used to help control our back face. Now this is interesting. Most plates are going to ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. This is a type of aramid fiber, Kevlar, whatever you want to call it. I think Kevlar is the brand name. Now our confirmed penetrations that we can see are our plus P plus M80 ball. That was, I think, 3,000 feet per second. This M193 shot right here and this shot of M855A1. Now looking at this front cover, this could be argued that that's in a weak area. And that one is a fair hit, but this plate has taken a lot of damage. And with our Kevlar, it doesn't seem to catch uh, remnants that make it past the ceramic very well compared to, say, polyethylene. It does tend to show less back face, though. It's pretty much well used up. I think we're using silicon carbide. My hands are getting dirty. I'm going to be careful or cut myself. I need my med kit from my medic if I do that all by myself. Here is the front of our plate. Interesting foam that we have here. We've seen something similar to this on the x sappy although it was a lot thicker on that than on here. I measured the strike face at around 250 thousandths thick. It's really hard to measure on this particular plate because one good thing that I see is a lot of adhesion. We got more of that aramid fiber, fiber that we're using like a laminate, so to speak, to kind of bond our plate together. And... There's some hard edges left, bottom here, but I think with silicon carbide, it tends to degrade rather quickly. Well, guys and gals, I broke another one. I would say our Defender Level 3X plate performed well within its specifications, given that it has an Aramid or Kevlar backing. I personally feel that if we swa switched out to you know an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene backer that this plate would perform much better against our over spec m80 ball but again that's outside of the purview of the nij even currently and upcoming and a lot of the results that you see here again i'll remind you they only pertain to the plate that i tested here if you see me stop a threat you should definitely go to the manufacturer and ask if they've had that officially tested in an NIJ lab. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible. After all, some of these tests get very expensive buying body armor or buying some of the threats. Number one is my Patreon and Subscribestar fans. I have those in my link tree down below. There's affiliate codes, discount codes. Essentially, they cost you nothing and they earned me a sales credit. One of those vendors is MyMedic. They sent over one of the MyFax, the My First Aid Kits, a bunch of basic first aid and some advanced stuff in here so that when I'm out here by myself and if I hurt myself, I need a way to control bleeding or burns, maybe if I grab a suppressor. So it was very nice of them to send this over for us to do a review on at some point. So I have the link in that link tree below. Number two is Defender Armor, who again in full transparency allowed me to purchase those at a discount so that I could do a review on it. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.